Hello and welcome to the first episode of Credentialed with Justine Ward and yours truly, Jillian Mealy. How are you feeling? I am so happy we're here. There's been a lot of work to get here and we're sitting down. We have our podcast mics. It's official, Jillian. It's official. It is official. Podcast microphones make it official. <laughs> so really though, you think about it. I mean, both of us have had these parallel journeys, which we'll get into. And I know a lot of people have been asking what you guys are starting together because we've given little hints here and there on social media. And now we can officially say we are friends and we are fellow podcasters. We are here and we are so excited uh, for this journey uh, via podcasts with, with all of you. And a lot of people may know and some people may not know. So let's just kind of go back, I guess, to the beginning because both of us have had pretty extensive, long careers in television news. And that combines both news and sports. For me, I started my career back in 2005 in one of the smallest TV markets of the country. It was like literally market 208 or 210, something like that out of 213, give or take a few, in Presque Isle, Maine. And it was absolutely freezing. I was a news and sports anchor. And I know you started your career similarly as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not quite market, did you say 208? To something. <laughs> to something. I was market 101 um, in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And actually, I loved my time there. But when you think about a grind and a one-man band, I was doing everything, writing, shooting, editing, mm -hmm. running my own live shots, Jillian. <laughs> I think in television, you have to pay your dues. There's no doubt about it. And it builds a lot of character. You learn a lot of lessons. You learn a lot about yourself going through those things that you go through to mm -hmm. make it up the ladder in television. So from there, then I went to Binghamton, New York, and I was there for about a year and a half. And then I came back home to Philadelphia at the young age of 24, where I was freelancing. I started off working like a day or two here and there. And then I did traffic. I did news. I filled in as a news anchor. I did sports. I had a high school football show. I won two Emmys for my sports coverage when I was in Philadelphia, had a sports show, and then went up to New York and worked nationally for about five years, which is where we met. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my story is similar in that I went to New York at 26 to work for SNY, uh, which is the Mets network, but covers all of the New York area teams. And I held a lot of different roles there. So I reported, I anchored their nightly sports show. I eventually was a sideline reporter for UConn women's basketball. That was an amazing experience where I got to go to the final four every year and really see this team through an entire season. And then ultimately, uh, before I made the pivot, I hosted my own show in the five o'clock hour. So I had a big hand in what is that show going to look like? What is the feel of that show? And, and bringing that to market was a, a really valuable experience. And you mentioned the pivot. That's a word that we've discussed a lot over the course of the last year or two, but even the last few months. And we will get into this a little bit more, but I want to just touch on the fact that you know, our podcast name is Credentialed. We talked about using something with pivot in it. There are so many because truly so many people pivot in life. They learn how to adapt. They do different things. And we are both examples of that. But Credentialed also has a special meaning for us because of our background in news and sports and all of the events that we've been privy to cover, mm -hmm. but also because we both decided to pivot and give up our careers in essence, or at least put a pause on them and go back to school. And people, when they hear that, they're like, you did what? Why? A hundred percent. When I left New York, I mean, even I love my brother, but even my own brother was like, what are you doing? Because journalism students, journalism professionals, they don't get MBAs. Um, but Jillian, I know, I know for both of us, it was just this thing that we had where you couldn't explain why, but there was something calling me truly to go do this. And I didn't care if people thought I was crazy or why would you do this? Why would you give up what many consider a dream job of covering New York sports, being in the clubhouse with the New York Yankees and the New York Mets and the New York Knicks? Why would you go do this? Um, but ultimately for us, it was the right decision at that time too, to make the pivot. So can I ask you, because I could never really pinpoint what it was that I was feeling. I was feeling something and this started, it's 2023. This started probably around 2019 for me. And it was just this feeling inside of, 
I'm not sure I'm where I'm supposed to be. And that could be professionally, that could be personally, that could be just actual physical location. I didn't know at the time, but I started to feel it. Like, what was it for you? I had similar feelings. I think I set this goal for myself to go to graduate school coming out of college. But then I, I had this career that I very much loved and enjoyed, and I still love covering sports. There is no doubt about that. But slowly, I think that feeling of wanting more and feeling like there was more for me just started to take over. And it got to the point where I had this voice in my head constantly saying, when are you going to get your MBA? When are you going to get your MBA? And ultimately, I think that I got to a point in my life and my career where I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel like everything was right anymore. And whether that was being in New York, I'm from the Midwest, or just not living up to my full potential in my current career, it became to a point where I couldn't drown that out anymore. And I felt like if I did not pursue this, I would feel like I had missed something that I was supposed to do. I had some similarities to you in that sense, but the difference was when I left college, I didn't have that instant, I want to go back to grad school. I want to get my MBA. For me, it happened a few years later. And it happened, I'd say, actually after a few years after I started my news career, my journalism career. And I always thought, you know, I think it's smart to have a backup plan. So what does that backup plan look like? And I don't know why no one put the idea of an MBA in my head. I honestly don't know where that idea came from. My dad owned his own business. Um, so maybe I saw that and that had something to do with it. I don't know, to be honest, but for some reason, at some point in my late twenties, that's when I was like, you know, I think I should go back for my MBA one day as just as a backup plan, as something to have, you know, as, as something that could help me in multiple aspects down the road, but it was always just back there and I kept it back there. Right. Mm -hmm. And it never really, I never did much about it. It was just always a fleeting thought. And then for some reason in 2020, and I don't blame this on COVID and the lockdowns and kind of being lonely in that sense. I don't really blame this on that at all. Mm -hmm. For me, it was more that voice that we talked about that really started, I think, about a year before that. And that's when I was like, you know, what else can I do for myself? Because I had been so wrapped up in my career for so long that, and this is my fault, my career became essentially my only identity. And I'm so much more than that, but I didn't feel like I was. I missed out on most holidays with my family, and this is not the only career where that happens, right? So I'm not saying that, but I missed out on holidays. I missed out on birthdays. I missed out on events. I would spend 15 years going to bed at 6 p.m. and waking up at midnight. And I just felt like my life was passing me by and I wasn't doing anything about it. I was sitting back waiting for it to change on its own. And I think when I realized, you know what, I need to be the one to control how I change this and I need to do something about it. That's when I thought long and hard. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to school. Now, now's the time I'm going to do it. I literally, I called my mom and you know, everyone else in my life. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to apply to grad school. And everyone was like, what? (laughs) Similar reaction. Similar reaction. I think for me, it had started prior. I actually took the GMAT while I was launching a brand new show. Would not recommend uh, doing that, but I got it done and I had it, but I was loving what I was doing in that I had such a creative say, say in the show. But I think the thing with COVID and the silver lining in it is that it caused a lot of people to slow down, to really think am I getting what I want out of life and to reassess? And for me, I think it gave me a time to pause and think about what do I really want to accomplish? I have a lot of goals still to this day. Like one is to be a mother. I really care about that. It's something that's just internal that I've always wanted. And I really felt like there's some things that I want to accomplish for myself before then. And then with the pandemic, with the pause was an opportune opportune time for me to step back and step away and go use this time to get a master's degree. And so what have you done with your degree? Because you, you've graduated. I have yes. not yet. Yes. Well, one, I will say at the end of the day, everything is a business. So ultimately where I got was, hey, maybe I don't want to be the sideline reporter. 
I want to be the person running the network. I want to be the person deciding the strategic direction of the network at some point, as much as I love sideline reporting. And so that helped with the MBA. But then once I got into that program, uh, Jillian, and I'm eager to hear this about yourself, my confidence about what I could bring to the table, what I could prove that I could do went through the roof. And I also discovered one, I really like this business thing. And two, I'm really good at it despite never taking a finance class and despite, you know, making most of my career in journalism. And so I didn't want to abandon the work that I had started. I now work in management consulting, which is a very tough industry. I work with wonderful people, but at the same time, I'm still constantly learning. I'm in MBA 2.0, where I'm working with all different types of clients at Fortune 500 companies from manufacturing, private equity, consumer products, and it has been an amazing experience. And now I'm continuing down that path of not only can I make it through business school, but I also can make it in the business world. Oh, and by the way, I have these skills in journalism that I like to keep and I like to use, and I'm really passionate about it. Hence, one of the many reasons we're doing this podcast. Oh, and by the way, you are also still sideline reporting. Yes, which I love. <laughs> Honestly, Minor it detail. feels like a vacation because I love it so much. I really do. And I'm really passionate about sports that has never, never gone away. And now you're using your new business school skills, by the way, to launch a business. Uh, so kudos to you for that. Thank you. Yeah, this is that is the part that I didn't see coming. So when I decided to take a pause, right, and give myself a much, I think, deserved and needed break from just the schedule and the pressure and the stress and everything that came along with that career and truthfully that I also put on myself. But so I was like, well, what's next? And I started having conversations with people who really knew me at different points in my life. Uh, some of those, I call it my discovery phase, like quote unquote discovery phase. Um, some of those people I hadn't spoken to in years. Some of those people I met when I was at my internship back in 2004 in college. And, you know, the list goes on, just different people that I've crossed paths with professionally in that world of journalism. And I started reaching out to people, being very vulnerable, which, by the way, has always been traditionally very hard for me to do. And being vulnerable and asking them, like, what, what do you see as my strengths? What do you see me doing? Do you have any ideas or thoughts. And everyone said the same thing. And I don't know why sometimes we don't see, we don't see in ourselves what other people see in us, I guess is the simplest way to put it. Mm -hmm. Everyone said, why are you not starting your own company? Why are you not, you know, utilizing the skills that you've built upon and really mastered over nearly 20 years in journalism? Why are you not doing something like this on your own. You can do that. You have the <clears throat> credentials <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Had to Love throw that. that in there. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I could do that. I can. All right. I can do that. I can do that. And then suddenly I was like, I'm going to do that. And so that's really where it was born was through other people's, I guess, perspective of me and of my skills and of what I could do. And so once I finally saw that in myself, I was like, all right, let's go, you know, let's, let's give it a try. And so I started this company, Jillian Mealy Communications, and instantly it was like, I was blown away at how many people reached out to me, people who watched me from my time nationally in Philadelphia, you know, wherever I was. And I, I cried. Like I literally, the first day that I launched my company within hours, I got, people sending me messages, I was in tears. Like, I can't believe this has happened. And this many people are interested. I can't though. That's the funny part about just us as humans, right? Mm -hmm. It's scary. You, no, it's very scary. And I think when you prioritize credibility and respect, those things pay off over the long term. And I know we have a lot of similar values in that we take our professionalism incredibly seriously. Um, and we considered it a privilege and still consider it a privilege uh, to do journalism in whatever form it may be, Jillian. And I think exactly. the thing that's really hard for people is that fear. Like it was really scary to go to business school. It was one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my life. I got a full ride to Notre Dame and 
I literally had a conversation where I've never seen finance. I've never seen uh, accounting at some of these things. I had a little accounting experience, but not much. What if I fail? But ultimately, similar to your business, it gets to a point where if you're going to regret not giving it a shot, give it a shot. What is the worst that can happen? That you tried something and you failed? Well, sometimes that failure gets you to where you're supposed to go anyway. You know what's so interesting about what you just said is that I didn't know. So when I decided to step down from my job as a national journalist, I didn't know then, and this was 2021, I didn't know then the impact it would have, not only on myself, but on other people. So I was blown away. When I announced I was stepping back and moving back home to Philadelphia, I had so many people, well, first of all, being like, what are you doing? Are you an idiot? And I'm like, ah, like it's hush hush, you know, like you, it's, I still don't know my plan. You don't need to know my plan. Let's just figure it out together type thing. Right. But so many people didn't understand. So many other people though, came up to me either personally or sent me messages online saying, I wish I had the guts to do that at your age because I have spent all these years regretting not doing that, regretting not giving myself a chance, regretting not giving something a try. And I had messages from parents saying, I want to show my kids or I want to show my daughter your message and your video and the moves that you've made because I think that it's inspiring. I think that it's really classy. I think it's really powerful to be able to do that for yourself. And Mm -hmm. that gave me so much strength and that gave me so much passion and drive to want to keep going and to be the best I could at this. And I had already started school at that point. My schooling's taken longer. You got it done in a year. I've been doing school for, this is my third year now because I've been working full time and starting this company while doing it. I have four classes left. I'll graduate in May. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's just really, I didn't, I didn't know how much of an impact decisions Mm -hmm. like that had on so many people. And for that, I am grateful. That gives inspiration to me from others, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it shows people like there's more than, than one path. Um, and I, I love that I went and got my MBA and potentially other women, other men anywhere see that and think, oh, maybe I could go, maybe I could go do something like that. Or maybe I could go give something a try and to give people exposure to something maybe they, they hadn't considered in their life. But I also think it points out one reason why we're friends and that we know that there are more important things in life. And I think we have always stuck to those values. And I think that's one reason we we bonded in New York. Yeah. So for those who don't know, Justine and I became friends on Instagram, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is hilarious. But that's what happens is you follow so many people who are in your industry, who especially are in your city. And New York is very lonely, can be very lonely. And while it is great, I think that's one of the things that I really struggled with is even though I'm from Philadelphia, a few hours south of New York City, I didn't know anyone in New York when I moved there. Mm-hmm. And it was really difficult to meet people. Yeah, especially with your hours too. But New York is an amazing place, but it is a a tough place. And I felt like I really grew as a person there and not having any family in the Northeast whatsoever either. It was new for me. I was never that person who said, I'm going to New York City. It just was not on my radar. Um, Grew up in the Midwest, love the Midwest. I've now lived all over the country uh, because of my journalism career, as as one does to make it to New York. (laughs) Uh, But I think where I had a hard time was finding people with like similar mindsets, similar value base. That's really important to me and really important who I spend my time with. And I felt so incredibly lonely in New York, even though I made wonderful friendships because everyone there is kind of working towards this career. But I also went through a lot of times, Jillian, where, where I was like, am I just going to be this, this woman working in New York without a family, et cetera, of her own or any real place to call home. And I think that's one of the really, really hard things uh, in New York City. Yes. But New York brought us together as friends. And I am so grateful for that. (laughs) And so now, you know, we've been talking about doing something like this together for a while. And we're both at this point in our lives where we're like, you know what, we're ready to just be ourselves and just tell our story and 
you know, that's one of the things that you had mentioned previously is that a podcast for you is really a way to just show people who you are, mm -hmm. people who aren't necessarily in your day in and day out life. Absolutely. I think for so long, we, we tell other people's stories, other people's wins and successes and failures as well. And I think for, for this, it would be an opportunity to really show ourselves. And often people don't get to see that the sides of us that are our friends, our family. I get to see that side of you, of course. And also we're off script. Like we are coming out of television where you're scripted all of the time. Of course, some things are ad lib. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a chance to show the real us, which we haven't been able to do elsewhere. I also really want to inspire other people. I think our journeys, while not yet complete, uh, they're very parallel. They're, I think, I mean, we've been told that they're inspiring and I want to keep doing that. You know, I want to keep having these real conversations. I want to keep motivating people who may be sitting there thinking, well, I want to try something else out or, well, I'm thinking about going back to school, but I'm just not sure. You know, I, I hope that our stories and our journeys can help people along the way. And I think that when we open up and share that side of us, that helps other people open up and share these things about mm -hmm. them. And so it's this constant circle of inspiration and motivation, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> it definitely does. And I think we also have a really unique perspective too, in that we not only had this television career and there's a lot of transferable skills to a lot of different industries, et cetera, um, really good at getting to know people. I would say like, that's my one skill is, is relationship building uh, that carries over from television to anywhere. But the second thing is now we have this, this MBA and Jillian, you're almost there in that we've added another skill set, more tools to the toolkit and have a unique way and perspective of looking at things. And so we're really excited to have those conversations. And speaking of conversations, let's talk about really why credentialed, because we went back and forth. I kid you not. We went back and forth for what feels like months about this. And this was actually the very first title that we came up with. We liked it. We set it aside. We kept going back to it, finding other things, going back to it, finding other things. We just couldn't settle on it. But what did you like about it? What I liked about it is that one, we used to wear those credentials uh, to get <laughs> the things are on your neck. <laughs> events, et cetera. And we've earned those through our combined years in television. And the second thing is that we are now hacking it in the business world. So we've earned some credentials uh, and quite literally, Jillian, you will get them on a degree in May that <sighs> I know once it's done, it is, <laughs> let me tell you, MBA is not a joke for anyone listening. It is not, not, not easy, but with some hard work, you can do it. Um, and so I think that's why, and I think we also wanted to have other folks on who have another story, story to share and a unique perspective as well. And they will be credentialed in various topics, you know, and that, that is the goal over the long term of this is to be able to have many different conversations with many people who have many different credentials. I think that's the goal of this podcast. You know, there are a lot of them out there, certainly, but I think hopefully people will want to just kind of have these conversations with us, right? Um, I want people to send us feedback and send us different topics or send us their thoughts on topics that we talked about. And it's not going to be a podcast that's topic specific, meaning you're, you're not going to get the same topic every week. We mm -hmm. want to make it different. We want to make it fun. We, we have a lot and we're also friends. So this conversation is easy for us to have. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I'm excited. Okay. I'm so excited. it's going to be weekly. And again, just, you know, send us your feedback and we hope that you will join us every week on drumroll, please. Credentials. Credentials.